What's up everybody, I'm Jason Mayfield and today I want to talk about what I look for when I'm studying the Bible. Got my overhead camera here today so you can see what I've got going on. If you've been following me for any length of time, whether that be on my Instagram account or here on the YouTube channel, uh, you've probably noticed that I like to write in my Bible. That's part of how I study and receive uh, from the Word. and. Uh, I have this kind of note-taking system that I've picked up and started using. I've always been a, a Bible writer. I've always marked in my Bible, but in the past, my system has not been great. It's been, um, it's been involved, but uh, it wasn't very organized, just kind of a messy system. So when I go back and look in my Cambridge Wide Margin, which is my NASB that I like so much. Um, I go back and read my notes in there and my first thought typically when I read a note is what am I referencing? <laughs> Versus now when I look at this I obviously know if I go to this note this note has to do with this right here. So it's a quick easy reference system. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about what I look for when I'm reading the Bible when I'm studying. To do that I just made a copy of my journaling Bible because I probably will write some nonsense down just for expediency's sake to show you what I'm looking for and show you how I'm taking notes. So here's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what I'm looking for. We're going to talk about how I theme those things. We're going to talk about um, how I write it on the page and then at the end I'll give you kind of an overview of where I'm at with all my pins and everything for the moment. So let's get started. I've actually had people ask me, you know, when you're in the Bible, what are you looking for? Are you looking for things that are in commentaries? Are you looking things up online? Are you looking for original languages? Are you writing down notes about, uh, you know, what the Holy Spirit's teaching you in the moment? Are you, you know, what, what, what exactly is it that I see on the page? And the answer is yes. It's all of it. Uh, sometimes, depending on your frame of mind, when you start reading, it's going to determine what your flow is going to be for the day. For instance, I, uh, I have um, an orange pen that I use to mark up whenever I'm talking about or whenever I see something that could be a wisdom, leadership, life principle that I want to make sure that I, you know, I, I apply in my, my life. Um, so I have some days that I wake up and I read and I could read a highly theological passage that's all about faith and all about grace. But because I'm in a wisdom frame of mind that day, there's tons of orange on the page. So a lot of days, you can kind of see when I started and stopped reading by the amount of a certain color because my frame of mind kind of can determine what I'm seeing that day, which is one of the reasons you should come back and read all the time. So the number one thing that I look for, though, and the number one thing that made a big impact on my life in terms of understanding the Scripture and probably the greatest revelation I've ever received is context. If you read the Bible in context, so much will open up to you. If you just can look at a verse and expand that verse far enough in the text to go, oh, I actually see the whole picture of what's going on, then you're going to receive a ton. So context is a big, big, big deal for me. So I'm looking for context, and then after that, you know, sometimes I'll be looking for original language stuff. If something's, I don't look up every word, but if something hits me funny, I'm going to look up the words around that, that thing that's hitting me funny and see if there's anything in the original language I ought to be aware of. And so I'll look up some original language stuff. I will, um, I will refer to commentaries if something is a little confusing to me. I typically don't go to a commentary until I have a question. And so if I'm answering those questions when I'm in a commentary because a passage is hitting me weird, then I'll write down whatever's in the commentary in my, my notes. So I'll have that in the future. And then obviously, whatever the Holy Spirit is teaching me, I want to be writing down every day. When I read, I say just my little ritual, Teach me Holy Spirit. So I'm looking for those things, but the primary thing is the context. I'm looking for how many times a word is on a page or in a section. What was he talking about before and after? Is this a bigger account than this one thing that's going on? So it's, it's context for me. And the new note-taking method I'm using has got me focusing on the words more than ever before. I used to be focusing on the big you know, sweeping theme of what was being talked about. Now I'm really drilling into, hey, you know, he said 
revive 17 times in two paragraphs, that might be something I want to take into consideration. You know, and so that's, that's the kind of stuff that I'll look for now. In terms of theming, um, which has more to do with my note system, but it also has to do with my personal revelation and my personal theology. Uh, not the theology of the people I'm connected with, not the theology of my church, not the theology of my pastor, but my personal theology and the areas that theology personally impacts my life. Those are where the themes come from. So the themes for me are really simple. I do this by color as well. I do, uh, I have money, which is green. Hope you, hope you see that. That's because we're business owners and we want to, we really want to be aware of money. We just went debt free. Uh, putting a bunch of money in the bank right now, and we're just trying to make all the right decisions with money. So I want to have a, a revelation of money from the Scripture. I don't just want to do money. I want to do money with God's blessing and God's assistance and God's providence over that. So money's green. I've got wisdom, which is orange. No, the rest of these really don't have any color coordination uh, or correlation. Uh, m wisdom, life principles, leadership stuff, that's all going to be orange. Uh, anything that's supernatural, whether that be a prophecy or a miracle, anything that is of the supernatural nature uh, that I write a note on is going to be uh, purple. Uh, faith, anything to do with faith, having faith or speaking faith is going to be red. Um, anything with the original language, if I have a, a note on the original language that there's something that pointed out to me, um, then I'm going to circle that. I'm going to do pink for my note and the circle and the line, and that way I can know what that word was. And then obviously grace. I use blue, a lot of blue in my Bible because you're watching Grace for Life. That's right. You get it. Those are kind of my themes. Here's the thing about theming in the Bible for me. I don't take it too serious. Theming is loose but helpful for me. I do not go in and go, oh, that's about grace. Let me put it in blue. Only if I have something that really stands out to me that is worth taking a note will I put it in blue. So I may read five passages back to back to back, and it's all grace stuff. But one passage says something about grace that really resonates with me. I'll circle that, write a note. So I'm not marking up my whole Bible. Um, I've done that before where I highlighted everything in one theme, and it just ended up being as messy as my old note-taking system and really was kind of ugly. As a matter of fact, my key verse, what I would call my life verse, I marked it up that way that when I first got this book or this Bible, and uh, it looks awful. And so my life verse is ruined in the Bible that I'm taking all the notes on. Whoops. So really quick, let me just kind of walk you through a day of you know writing down. I'm probably going to make a lot of this stuff up. You're really going to need to not dig down into my theology right now because I very well could just start making stuff up here in a second just so I can show you how I'm writing and what I'm looking for. Okay, so first thing is I use black to kind of get initiated with everything. Um, Let's we'll start in uh, chapter 8 here. There, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So let's just circle that, those who are in. And let's just say, but you might be condemned outside of Christ. Now I'll just draw a line over here and an arrow. And again, that's I'm just I just noticed something that it didn't say. It doesn't talk about people who aren't in Christ. It's only talking about people who are in Christ. So uh, those who are in Jesus Christ, there's no condemnation for them. For the law of the Spirit of life, the law of the Spirit. Okay, so this isn't the law, but it's a law. And that is important because when we talk about the law, typically we're just talking about the law of Moses. And we need to remember that every time there is a law mentioned, it's not talking necessarily about the law of Moses. Grace has not brought all law to an end, but it has brought the entirety of the law of Moses to a close. It's fulfilled that completely. But there are still natural laws that, are not, um, that have not come to an end. Uh, the law of gravity was not, uh, you know, suspended because you're in grace. And if it is, I want you to come on. I want you to be on the podcast. I want you to teach on that because I want to I wanna float, son. I want to float. So let's see. Uh, free in Christ from the law of sin and death. 
So there's another law here, the law of sin. I might just draw a connection there to that. By the way, I read a little more thoroughly before I start marking all this stuff up, but we're doing a video. For God has done what the law... Okay, now this law is specifically talking about the law of Moses. Specifically, the law of Moses. Okay? Um, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Uh, there's a note there, but I'm just going to keep going. Not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is, uh, is hostile to God. Okay, so verse 7. If I'm going to write a note about a whole deal, a whole verse, I'm just going to make a box around it, typically. And right here, I'm going to say, when we focus on the law, we get angry with God. Again, I'm giving you the quick and dirty version here. And then... Uh, you, however, are not of the flesh. Let's just see if I want to write anything in. Um, okay, so for right there, we're going to let that rest for a second. Now, here's the deal. Basically, everything that I just wrote is gray stuff. Now, I'm going to go back and add some color to it, but here's the thing about the color. The theme is good, and the theme is important, and it's, it's helpful to have it themed. But actually, the purpose of the colors for me is primarily to separate the thought visually. Because if I do all of this in blue, it's just going to all be blue. So what I may do is just go through here and say, um, let me find the gr most grace kind of stuff, which is going to be like this no condemnation. Okay. And then I've got all this stuff on the law right here. So I want to... I'm not going to confuse that with gray. So I'll just, real quick, I'll just do that in yellow because I am clarifying some stuff in the passage. And here's the interesting deal, though. In two senses of the law, one note literally says that this isn't the law, but it's a law. So we're talk not talking about the law of Moses. And then another one, I am clarifying that this is actually the law of Moses. So I'm going to do that in two different yellows. I'll explain that at the end. But visually, that's a lot better. Okay. The mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God. Now, that is a grace deal, but it's also a wisdom principle. Because we want to make sure that we're helping people set their mind in the right place. Because the, what you think about God and what you think towards God will determine so much of your life. So we'll just put that in orange. Again, not married to any of this. Don't know that any of these notes would actually show up in my Bible. So there, we've got a section just easily done. So we'll skip down real quick. Go down to, uh, um, let's see. Uh, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For those who do not receive the spirit of slavery, our fathers, spirit of heirs. I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is revealed to us. Now, when it comes to suffering, that's a real heavy concept. So I could really get into here and just start writing a bunch of notes, you know, and just suffering is dot, dot, dot. I actually have done some teaching on suffering in terms of what it says in the Bible and what I call the transferred experience. So you should go check that out. Woo. Throwing markers everywhere. This is going to be a grace deal. Okay, so as we keep going, uh, the creation itself will be set free from bondage. For in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is not that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait in patience. And then he gets up into some other stuff over here. And you know, this would be a good connection. 
Um, now hope that is seen is not hope. And then right here we could talk about faith is the substance. Boom. And that is a faith deal. And faith is red. When I use my pens, I kind of just scribble the color on. I kind of visually like the way it looks too. I think it looks cool. Okay. So, <clears throat> just some of the things I was looking for. Sufferings. One, we need to understand suffering when we talk about it in the context of the gospel because it's important. The mind that's set on the flesh is hostile to God. That's important to know. Those who are in Christ. What about those who aren't in Christ? Uh, the law. We need to clarify what we're talking about when we're talking about the law because it talked about the law of the Spirit, the law of sin, and then it said the law. And we know typically when we're talking about grace, the opposite of grace is the law of Moses. So when we're talking about the two covenants, the covenant of grace, the covenant of law, new covenant, old covenant... So we always want to clarify that. Then uh, we come down, we see this, uh, now hope is seen. Hope that is seen is not hope. Obviously, it's going to throw over to faith. So I'm thinking contextually. Now I'm thinking the other references. And let's just say that we got in here and, um, you know, we read in the Greek that, you know, the word heirs here actually was the word, you know, bookworm. <laughs> And the only way I would know that is if Ayers was hitting me funny. If Ayers hit me funny, I would go in and look it up and see what the deal was. Nothing here has particularly hit me funny. So I would just do a note like that for if it was original language deal. So that's kind of what I'm looking for and how I'm taking the notes as I'm going through. So really quick, let's talk about the pens that I'm using just so you uh, can know. Maybe that'll be helpful for you. Pens are a evolution for me. So it'll probably be different tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I've already kind of made a decision that I'm going to make a change here, but I'll tell you what I'm doing now. Let's start with the black pen. I use the Sharpie art pens for boxing, underlining, circling, drawing my lines. So these are bigger, thicker pens. And then I use my Pigma Micron, which I didn't do in this video, but I use my Pigma, Pigma Microns uh, 005, the really fine print. I think I'm going to go a little bit bigger. It may be a little too fine. Really fine nib on this pen. Helps me to write super small so I can get more notes on the page. So I use these two in tandem. I think I'm going to drop this and just use the, the Micron from now on because the colors fill it in. So the thickness isn't quite as important. So I've been using the Inkjoy ballpoint pens. These are the RT, or I'm sorry, the 300 RTs. I like these pens because they are cheap, they do not bleed very much, they do not smear, they are cheap, they are cheap, they are cheap. And a lot of things that I do personally, I want to make sure that I do in a way that other people can take and implement into their life. So um, other than the fact that I, I have a tendency to really like expensive Bibles, but like right now, this is a $20 Bible I've been using, the journaling Bible I've been using. So this is all kind of stuff anybody could do. Uh, so these pens are like five bucks. I mean, this, this is nothing. I've been really happy with how these work in terms of just using them for color in the Bible. But I also was trying something else because I can. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a grown man. I can do what I want. That's right. So I've been trying these. These are Tombow pens. Um, they have a brush which I don't use, really. I mean, I may use them occasionally, but then they have this little fine uh, tip here. And I use the, I've been trying these the last couple of days. They look really good, they work really good, not a lot of bleed, nice to just get that color around. And with my pens, you saw, I have to do the whole drawing it in. With this, it's a little more like you just trace it and you're done. Just you know, more information than you want. What I do like about the pens versus this, not only the cheapness, but I like that these pens are retractable. I think that makes it easier and quicker and you move faster and I, I like that. I like being able to move quickly. 
and then uh, these, you know, they've got the caps on them, and I think caps slow you down. It's more to think about. So the only other thing about pens that I want to share with you is in terms of color, when I do a note, a note always pretty much has a color on it. And if it's outside of my theme, just something I want to make note of or whatever, I do it in yellow. I'll use a yellow highlighter to box it around or a yellow marker, but sometimes the generic stuff outweighs in, in terms of uh, quantity on a page, it will outweigh anything that's themed. So I may have one grace thing and one wisdom thing, but then I may have four or five yellow things. And sometimes to separate that visually is tough because that's really the purpose, is to have a visual separation. It's not to theme. Theming came secondary to that. So what I did is I started going around the house and finding all the yellow pens and markers I could find. <laughs> so I got a bunch of them. And what I ended up doing is I ended up keeping these primarily, and I've been using the Tombow in the last couple of days. And these are all slightly different shades of yellow. So visually on the paper, it's a little easier to determine what I'm looking at. And you saw that here when I did the yellow here and the yellow here. This is obviously more fluorescent, but they're both yellow. And even though the notes overlap, I can separate that. So if I did another one down here that was yellow, no big deal. But right here, I need that visual separation. And then if I added a third one in, <clears throat> you know, if I added a third note to come back and have another color that I can use is also helpful. And so you can see those all have different colors and I don't get confused about where the notes are, are going. So anyway, that's kind of my process for writing, what I'm looking for. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you like the video, you comment below, and you subscribe to the channel. All those things help us reach more people. Until next time, I'm Jason Mayfield, and I'm praying that you continue to experience grace for life through Jesus Christ. See you later.